Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the light night from day.
I want my people to know that just because you are called and chosen, it doesn't mean that you won't have to go through some things. Mm -hmm. But we must remember that no matter what we go through, at the end, it will always work out for our good. Psalms 34, 19 lets us know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of the oh. Now, as we have been looking at the life of Joseph, we see that Joseph had a unique gift. And Joseph was a dreamer. But not only was Joseph a dreamer, but Joseph also had the ability to interpret dreams. However, not everyone was happy about this gift that Joseph had. And many of you will find in your walk with Christ, because we all have different gifts, mm -hmm. you will find that people will not always be happy with the gift that God has given you. Mm. Say that. In Genesis chapter 13, we see that Joseph's father had given him a coat of many colors. And this obviously made his brothers a little upset. They felt that Joseph's father loved him more than they loved them. And then Joseph made the ultimate mistake of telling his brothers about a dream that he had. And in this dream, we all know that he saw them bowing down to him. Now this clearly sent his brothers over the edge. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, but I, I would just imagine, I don't think that Joseph was necessarily telling his brothers this dream just to be bragging those or anything like that, but Joseph was young. And I think he was still trying to figure out this gift that God had given him, and he was just excited and he just wanted to share it. But he didn't realize at that young age that sometimes you just can't share everything to everyone that, that God, God gives you. you. That's right. It's the God in me. In this year of revival and renewal, as we grow and as we get closer to God, you will find that people will begin to hate you. People will begin to talk about you. You will find that sometimes you may hear people talking and as you walk up, they get quiet. And it's not because you have done anything to them. It's simply because they don't like the favor of God that is on your life. All right. And it's not necessarily them. That's what we got to keep in mind. It's not necessarily them. It's the enemy. Amen. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, Joseph's brothers pretty much despised him the more. And they wanted to kill him. They just wanted him gone. They wanted him to disappear. Mm -hmm. But thank God his brother Reuben this convinced his brothers, listen, let's not kill him. Now, brother, this is our brother. So to paraphrase the whole situation, they pretty much took his coat that the father had given him. They, they, they threw him in the pit, he was sold, and we know eventually he ended up in the house of Potiphar, who was an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard. Now, Joseph's new master quickly realized that the hand of God was on Joseph's life. Pretty much everything that Joseph touched turned to gold. And I guess the master was saying, Pretty much, I see. I like what I see, and I want some of that. Mm -hmm. So, what did the master do? He just he decided he made Joseph the overseer of his house and all that he had. But once again, Joseph still had to deal with some obstacles that came his way. Mm -hmm. and, and in this instance, the obstacle was the wife of the master, mm -hmm. who decided that she wanted Joseph. I guess she saw him walking around, and I don't know, man. I guess he looked good to her. I don't know what the case may be. But she decided that she wanted to have an affair with Joseph. But Joseph said no. Amen. Because of, like, because of his commitment to God, because of his, uh, his appreciation, even for his master that had given him the, the, uh, the rights that he had had, and Joseph just didn't want to uh, let them down. But this didn't stop that old woman. Amen. She still mm. kept trying mm. to pursue Joseph. Not, not but I'm so cool, glad that Joseph cougar. stood his ground right. and he continued to say no. Cougar. And eventually what happened was her ego was crushed. And she became angry. And so what did she decide to do? I'm going to lie. And she decided to tell her husband that Joseph had tried to force himself upon her. And when the master heard this naturally, he got upset just like anybody else would. Here it is, I, I bring this man into my house, I give him, you know, the keys to the kingdom, and then, now you're gonna try to live with my woman? And then, so he pretty much put Joseph in the prison. But we see that even in the prison, Joseph still had God's favor Favor. on his life. It's the God in me. Mm -hmm. Genesis 39 and 22 lets us know, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all of the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, 
there, he was the doer of it. Why? It's the God in me. Mm. Joseph never stopped dreaming. He continued to stay focused on the plan for his life. But I wonder, how many Josephs do we have in our churches in 2020? Mm. Which brings me to Genesis 40, verses 2 and 3, where it said, And, and Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them inward in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Now, as we learned all last week, the butler and the baker both had dreams while they were in the prison. Mm -hmm. And these dreams concerned them a little bit, maybe because they didn't understand what they meant. But I can hear this old song that we used to sing years ago that said, you're in the right place at the right time to receive a blessing from the Lord. Right. Why? Because they were in the prison with Joseph. Right. Mm -hmm. So when Joseph saw them, he could tell something was wrong. So Joseph asked them, you know, what's going on? You know, what, what's the problem? So pretty much they explained and they told Joseph about their dreams and uh, they told Joseph what the situation was. Now, I want you to keep in mind Genesis 40 and 8. Joseph said to them, do not interpretation belong to God? Mm -hmm. Tell me, I pray you. In other words, Joseph was letting them know that it's not about him. It's not in him alone, but it's the God in him that allows him to interpret these dreams. Amen. Why? Because it's the God in me. Mm -hmm. Now, after they told Joseph their dreams, we all know what happened. Both of the dreams came to pass. Which brings us to Genesis 41, verses 15 through 16. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou can hear a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me, but God shall give Pharaoh the answer of peace. Mm -hmm. Now, three weeks ago, Reverend Washington let us know that the Lord was with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Then all last week, Reverend Edwards spoke about when God speaks. Yes. And on tonight, I just want to remind you that in 2020, the year of revival and renewal, as we seek God the more, Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we continue to walk this walk with Christ, as we allow God to use us in the calling that he has placed upon us as, as God's anointing continues to rest upon us, we must remember that it's not about us. We must remember that we're not all that. You know, I often remind the choir before we sing, I always remind them that we need to pray and ask for God's anointing every time we get up to minister. Why is that? Because if God doesn't show up, we're not ministering. We're simply entertaining. And this is what's going on in a lot of our churches today, in my opinion. We have locked Jesus out of the church. Mm. And we have turned our Sunday worship experience into a Broadway theatrical event. Mm. Now, I don't know about you, but I can hear the voice of the Lord saying, it's time for us to turn this thing around. Yes. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. if my people which are called by my name mm -hmm. shall humble themselves yeah. and pray, yeah. see my face, turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. It's the God <laughs> in me. All right. Now, the same God that was in Joseph that gave him the ability to interpret dreams, the same God that was in David as he defeated the giant Goliath, yes. the same God that was in Daniel in the lion's den, the same God that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the burning fiery furnace, the same God that was in Jesus Christ as he picked up that old rugged cross and as he was hung and died on that cross, is the same God that was in Jesus Christ as he was buried in that grave, but on the third day he rose up with all power in his hand. Amen. Now, this is the same God that is in us. 1 John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, mm -hmm. and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you mm -hmm. than he that is in the world. So as I take my seat, 
I just want to remind everyone, including myself, that as we go through 2020, the year of revival and renewal, as we continue to press toward the mark, as we continue to grow in Christ and be used by God, don't get high-minded. Right. Don't let the enemy make you believe that it's all about you and that you don't need Jesus. Mm -hmm. I can almost hear, with, I think with James Bryan, I had that song, he always say, please, 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 please. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say on tonight, please, 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 tell yourself every day, it's the God in me. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of this song that we used to sing back at home. It said, without God, I could do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God, my life would be rugged like a ship without, without a, a sail. sail. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell your neighbor one more time, it's the God in me. It's the God in me. Amen. 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 That's all Thank the Lord you. has given me on tonight. Yeah. Amen. 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 I just want to encourage someone on tonight that remember, no matter what you are going through, Okay, as Joseph went through things, we all go through different situations. Okay, but we just have to remember that God will bring us out. But when he brings us out, and when he uses us to help draw someone else, just remember that it's not you, but it's the God in you. All right. And then everybody keeps saying amen. amen. Uh -huh. Now, there may be someone here on tonight that may not know who this Jesus is. Amen. That's your, that's your personal state. I'm looking around the room. It doesn't seem like we have too many visitors, so. Mm. But I still want to assume. Amen. So if, if there's anyone here who may not know who Jesus Christ is and you want to accept him and you want to be able to walk around and say to yourself that it's the God in me, now is the time. Amen. I'm going to get on mine. I'm going to do this acapella. Without God. I can do nothing without God. I would fail without God. My life would be rugged like a ship, ship without, without a sail. No, one more time. Without, without God.